More than 50 years ago, on July 20th, 1969, two brave souls made their first steps on the moon, marking a huge moment of the 20th century. This event stands as proof of the incredible feats we can achieve when we join forces for a shared vision. It's something truly inspiring, yet the mainstream narrative often skips over the intense and fascinating details that makes this adventure truly remarkable. We say this because you may not be familiar with the computer glitch that occurred 30,000 feet above the moon's surface or the critical 15 seconds that could have meant life or death for Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. There's also the story of the pen that prevented our astronauts from being stranded on the moon indefinitely and a nerve-wracking near disaster just before they returned to Earth. So this is the untold story of the Apollo 11 moon landing, a tale of the space race brought to life. In today's world, we've become used to the idea that space missions are run by automated and autonomous spacecrafts. Though we still refer to it as a human spaceflight, it's pretty evident that robots have taken the helm. Let's take a peek inside the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule, and instead of traditional controls, you'll find only a set of iPads. The Artemis 1 mission recently made a journey to the moon and back without a soul on board. Save for a plastic mannequin in the captain's seat, each week we witness the extent of these technological advancements as the Falcon 9 booster autonomously flies back from space to land on a drone ship in the sea. Given all these marvels, it's astounding to recall that NASA achieved a lunar landing with technology no more sophisticated than a basic calculator. In truth, Neil Armstrong faced even greater challenges. The initial step of an Apollo moon landing, the detachment of the lander from the command module, veered dramatically off course for Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, marking a rocky start to their mission. As the Lunar Excursion Module, or LEM, positioned itself for descent, the main engine fired up the descent burn, hovering about 30,000 feet from the moon's surface. Armstrong noticed their speed and trajectory would result in overshooting their landing target. He communicated to Aldrin, noting, I think we were coming in a little long, implying their approach was too fast, risking missing the carefully selected landing spot in the Sea of Tranquility a vast, flat, and smooth area ideal for landing. Facing this unexpected turn, Armstrong assessed their path and the landscape through this small, triangular window. He realized they were veering three miles off target, heading towards a massive crater edge, an air that could spell disaster and death on the lunar surface. In a moment of quick thinking, Armstrong decided to disregard the computer's guidance, taking manual control of the LEM in a move reminiscent of a science fiction hero. He later shared in interviews that he navigated the spacecraft as if piloting a helicopter, relying on his skills and instincts to guide them safely. As this intense scenario unfolded, the lunar lander's cockpit was overwhelmed with flashing red lights and alarms, adding to the high stakes environment. The LEM was equipped with three basic display screens, each now flashing the same cryptic message, Program Alarm 1202. Neither Armstrong nor Aldrin had encountered this error during their exhaustive training simulations on Earth, leaving its meaning a mystery. Remaining composed, they contacted NASA for guidance. The response they received was essentially a green light to proceed despite the alarm, reassuring them not to worry. With about 5,000 feet between them and the moon's surface, Armstrong began to steer the craft manually, searching for a safe place to land amidst a terrain scarred by craters and ridges. By the time they were 100 feet from landing, Armstrong was fully focused, meticulously adjusting the rocket's engine throttle to navigate their descent. Meanwhile, Aldrin, embodying calmness, provided crucial data on their altitude, speed, and descent rate offering steady support without overwhelming Armstrong with urgency. Aldrin later reflected on these moments, acknowledging his effort to maintaining composure and not rushing Armstrong or adding pressure, despite noticing they were 100 feet up, moving at 30 miles per hour, and with only 60 seconds of fuel left. 
This critical juncture showcased their remarkable teamwork and focus under pressure, a testament to their skills and determination. By this stage, the engine's blast was steering up lunar dust, veiling Neil's view through the window, which was crucial for guiding the lunar excursion module to secure landing. They were hovering just 10 feet off the ground when they noticed their fuel diminishing to a mere 30 seconds of burn time. At 5 feet above the lunar surface, the probes extending from the LEM's legs made contact, bending under its weight. This action set off a much more welcome light in the cockpit, indicating contact. The engine then ceased, and the LEM softly touched down on the moon's dust. The triumphant message relayed back to NASA was, Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Ultimately, they landed about four miles off their intended spot, a deviation caused by an unexpected burst of air from the command module during separation, which slightly pushed the LEM off course, leading them roughly 15 seconds of fuel upon arrival. Any delays in Armstrong's decision could have resulted in a catastrophic crash into the moon's surface. Yet, Neil Armstrong flawlessly executed the landing, showcasing why NASA selected him for Apollo 11. His unparalleled intelligence, courage, and piloting prowess set him apart not only within the Air Force, but also among the elite astronauts of the 1960s. Following this intense landing, Armstrong and Aldrin embarked on the historic moonwalk, marking one of humanity's most significant achievements. However, challenges persisted. After spending two and a half hours on the lunar surface, the duo returned to the LEM to start their journey back to orbit and meet the command module, where the often overlooked astronaut Charlie Duke awaited. Their next task was to reconnect their spacesuit's life support system to the module, discard their backpacks onto the moon, and eliminate as much weight from the LEM as possible for their return trip. This meticulous preparation underscored the critical balance between human ingenuity and the unforgiving nature of space exploration. In the midst of reorganizing the lunar module for their journey back, one of them accidentally brushed against a control panel, causing the tip a crucial switch to snap. Neil Armstrong suggested that it was Buzz Aldrin who, moving backward, had inadvertently broken the switch. Given the switch belonged to an analog panel, the only way to activate the circuit was to flip the switch manually, which was now impossible without its tip. The bulky glove of their spacesuits made it impossible to manipulate the small, broken piece directly. Fatefully, the damaged switch was essentially for igniting the ascent engine necessary for their return to orbit. Feeling the weight of their lunar expedition, both astronauts took a much needed rest while Mission Control scrambled for a solution to the snap switch dilemma. Despite their best efforts, by the time Armstrong and Aldrin were ready to leave the moon, there was still no clear solution in sight. It was then Aldrin's quick thinking came to the forefront. He ingeniously used a space pen from their kit, inserting it into the slot left by the broken switch tip. This makeshift solution fits perfectly, allowing the astronauts to engage the control needed to initiate their ascent. The likelihood of a catastrophic failure during the mission was high, yet it was ultimately human creativity and skill that ensured its success. Interestingly, the US government was acutely aware of the risks involved, to the extent that President Nixon had a consolatory speech prepared should Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin not return. This speech, discovered in Nixon's presidential archives, was never needed, but it remains a poignant reminder of the risks they faced. A particularly moving part of the speech reads, Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men know there is no hope for their recovery, but they know also that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in humanity's quest for knowledge and understanding. Thankfully, fate was on the side of Armstrong and Aldrin, allowing them to safely reunite with a command module and begin their journey back to Earth. But the mission's challenges were far from over. Arguably, the most perilous moment occurred at the very end, 
as the capsule re-entered Earth's atmosphere. The critical step in this final phase involved detaching the crew capsule from the service module. The plan called for the service module's engine to ignite post-separation, propelling it into a higher orbit, ensuring it would disintegrate safely away from the crew's trajectory. This maneuver was crucial for the safety of the crew during re-entry. The mission's success hinged on a blend of human expertise and creativity. Even the US government was braced for the possibility that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin might not return. With President Nixon having a consolatory speech prepared, a testament to the high stakes of the mission. This speech, discovered in Nixon's archives, highlights the courage and sacrificial spirit of the astronauts, emphasizing their contribution to humanity's quest for knowledge and understanding. Fortunately, fate favored the crew, allowing them to reunite with the command module and begin their journey back to Earth without incident, or so it seemed. Unexpectedly, a critical malfunction occurred during re-entry. The engine meant to separate the service module failed to ignite, causing both modules to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere on the same path. This led the crew to navigate through the fiery debris of the disintegrating service module, a perilous moment that could have ended disastrously. Miraculously, the capsule remained undamaged, and the astronauts returned safely, though their ordeal was far from over. Upon their return, the Apollo 11 crew faced another challenge, quarantine. NASA, while certain the moon was devoid of intelligent life, could not miss the possibility of lunar microbes. To ensure no extraterrestrial organisms had hitched a ride back to Earth, the astronauts were isolated for 21 days. This period of seclusion was a final, anticlimactic chapter to their historic journey a time of reflection and anticipation of what findings their mission might yield. These anecdotes underscore the real human experiences behind space exploration, marked by both incredible achievements and some very real challenges. We hope that was helpful. For more interesting space content, don't forget to check out some of our other videos on your screen.